Welcome to JWL Sports, where we review all the best sports from around the world. Now you're probably wondering, why should I watch over here instead of anywhere else? And that's because over there, they don't care about what you have to say. They say this all the time, they talk down to us, they think we're just a bunch of clowns on YouTube, Twitter. But I think it's the opposite. I think we know exactly what we're talking about. So I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions, let's get in some fights, but ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I wanna build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of, and I think we're well on our way to doing it. Without further ado, Let's get to it. We're watching a clip of First Things First, talking about um, the Bengals. And they're in some trouble because, you know, Higgins and Hendrickson, they, they want out. And these are key players for the Bengals. And one of them, of course, for Joe Burrow. So it's going to be interesting because you need to put together a legitimately great roster to be able to compete in the AFC, um, especially against either whether it be Baltimore, whether it be Buffalo, of course, um, Kansas City Chiefs, and now you have the Texans coming, and who knows what's going to be going on with the Chargers, how quick they're going to write the ship. So, you know, you have Joe Burrow, an elite quarterback, of course, and you have a pretty good offensive-minded head coach, but you need some pieces. You need some pieces, or you need, and if you don't have some pieces on the offense, then you definitely need to have an elite defense, because make no mistake about it, um, the Kansas City Chiefs were not going to win this Super Bowl if their if their defense didn't step up so much. So you can only ask a quarterback to overcome so much. Um, so I'm curious to see. I know Nick is definitely going to gloat, and God knows what he's going to say for this one. So let's take a listen, and we'll break it down from there. And at 18 tonight, as they look to add to their team. On the flip side, two players looking to lead the team. T. Higgins asked for a trade in March. He recently said, like, hey, by the way, that's still standing. I still want out of here. And defensive end Trey Hendrickson said, by the way, I want out too. Nick, negotiating tactic or are the Bengals in real trouble? Well, I don't know. Who are the best players on their team last year? Let's talk about it. Running back's gone. Joe Mixon. Brew loves him. Uh, Hendrickson had 17 and a half sacks. He's just got $21 million extension a year ago. He's unhappy. He's like, and I read today he is consider he might go back to the Bengals. He has demanded the trade and he's considering retirement. So we call this yeah. the oh, full. I'm sure that retirement. The right, full right. list. We're all worried the, about the him full retirement. list of options. <laughs> um, okay. T. Really Higgins uh, is you know doesn't want to be there because they don't want to pay him. Uh, I thought that Browning was quite good last year, but he's their backup quarterback because Joe Burrow's yeah. coming back, thankfully. Yeah, I, I like Browning. I thought he played well as a backup quarterback. Listen, uh, good thing you built a roster to beat Kansas City. Bad thing you're not going to get an opportunity to beat them in, can in the playoffs for a few years now. Like this team's what, – But here's the – What? Thing. What? They're We're not – they're in trouble, but not for that. Re so what? T. Higgins requested a trade. Guess what he said two weeks ago? I expect to be back in Cincinnati. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. All right. Just so what? Trey Hendrickson requested a trade. The Bengals have said we have no interest in trading him. If if Trey Hend Hendrickson and Higgins want the big bag, what are they gonna have to do? Go back to Cincinnati and play their butts off. They, they, it behooves them to have the best season of their career. And they'll be team. fine. Now, I think Cincinnati, I'm not going to say in trouble, but I think they, I mean, they got a tough road ahead of them because of the division, mm -hmm. but not because these two guys okay. have requested but trades. But do you remember all the years where everybody wanted out of Cincinnati because it was so bad and it was so poorly run yep. and they didn't have any good guys and, and it went on and on. Now they're in a situation where they've got to pay a lot of people because they're a good team and that's a much better, that's a high cool. class problem. So T. Higgins is getting $21 million in the franchise tag. That's terrible. I mean, I'm sure, you know. I he wants a long-term deal. Yeah, we all want a long-term deal. But that's I, not the situation. That's what he's got. And then with, with the other situation, you go in, you ask for a, an extension. You get a $21 million one-year extension. And I'm sure he said, and then I'll be happy. And then the next year, you walk in, you're like, Hey, I'm not he happy. Had and a half sacks. I want some more money. Okay, well, well yeah. talk to your agent. You, they can't even okay. renegotiate the contract by league rules for another. No, three but months. they could. They could give them more years on the back end. There's you, things they, they they can't renegotiate. Okay, it. That's but, true. But I've been through that I, situation when yeah. I first got to the Jets. Guy came in and said, "I'm unhappy with my contract," and I said, "Okay, well, we'll look at it." So we talked about it. We gave him a little bit more money, and he said, oh, I'm so happy. And the next year, guess what he did? Yeah. I'm unhappy. That's with that. the business. And just like yeah, the team, the business just like is also the team that they'll play. can sign him to an extension. Instead of having 17 and a half sacks, he had zero and a half sacks. Maybe his they would have cut him. Ask for a long-term deal when but, but when, to do a 
the off. most to me interesting thing coach said there was remember when Cincinnati nobody wanted to play there because they didn't think they were well run they didn't pay their guys yeah I remember that no, evidently I didn't that's this they morning didn't pay the guys. evidently I that's said, today I said because two of their best the players pay. have demanded trades They're because not going they haven't gotten yeah. extensions so yes I remember all They're the way back when that happened I'm sure, this morning I'm sure he's gonna retire <laughs> okay I'm not gonna retire Jonah Williams. So, okay, I don't, I, listen, I'm never going to pretend like I have any idea when something is, you know, a negotiating tactic or what. So I, I don't want to come on too strongly and say, oh, well, they definitely want out or no, nah, they're just looking for more money or long-term deal, this, that. I have no idea. These guys have no idea either, um, which is why they both, which is why they all disagree. They all have different opinions. Um, I think if... If they do want out and it's not a negotiating tactic, then I think that speaks volumes about the culture of the Cincinnati Bengals. And then the question is, where does where does that fall on? Does that fall on Joe Burrow? Does that fall on the head coach, the GM, the owner? You know, like it's kind of interesting because if you were rolling and you and these players really felt that they had a chance to win then they wouldn't want to leave unless they really are just all about the money and they don't care, which is also technically possible. But it just, it is somewhat suspicious because I don't know, you know, you had Tyreek Hill. He wanted that money. He wanted that bag. He left Kansas City, right? And that had nothing to do with Kansas City's culture or anything of that nature. But I do think, but that is a little bit different because Tyreek Hill did at least already get that ring. I wonder if Tyreek Hill, and Tyreek Hill claimed originally that it was also a negotiating tactic. That he was kind of like, oh, wait, what? I'm going to Miami? Like, I, that's not the worst thing in the world. And I'm also getting all this money. But, like, I, I wanted to stay in Kansas City. So, it is an interesting situation. I wonder if part of the problem is, is that Joe Burrow keeps getting hurt. And it is Cincinnati. And some of these players are like, well, listen, I'm not taking any pay cuts. Or I want some money. And if Joe Burrow is going to keep getting injured, then what the heck am I doing here? Like, either send me to a place where I'm going to be able to get paid and still not win but either way i'm getting paid or i want to go somewhere where i can like actually win so either way no matter how we look at it i think it's problematic because if it's a negotiating tactic you're in a bad spot where your team feels where your players feel the need that they have to request trades and do all this to leave because high functioning cultures don't have that it's always the, the teams that have the problems that have, you know, that where the players feel the need that they have to go and do that. And to me, the biggest wild card and question mark is the inconsistency of the health of Joe Burrow. You know, if Joe Burrow was consistently playing and they were just like, you know, losing in the playoffs or getting so close, but, you know, having a close game with like Kansas City or Buffalo and it was like, ah, we're right there. Then it would probably be a little bit easier to make sense. But since... We have no idea at any given moment, is Joe Burrow going to be able to play? Yes or no? It makes it a little bit more, it's harder. You know, I don't know what you do if you're a player and you're, you know, you want money, but you also want to win and you're part of the franchise of the Bengals, which has obviously improved over the years, but you know, you have an amazing coach or an amazing quarterback and a really, really good coach and you have a chance. You went to the Super Bowl a few years ago, however many years it was. And you know, you, you, you're there, you're, you're in the hunt. But your main guy keeps going down. And as soon as he goes down, you know there's no chance. It's hard. It, 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 it's, it's hard to then keep bringing that motivation to, to go out there. And if you're, again, if you're not going to win at this place, it is get me my money. I want money. Give me the money. And if you're not going to give me the money, well, then I am going somewhere else. Because I, at the end of the day... I want my money at least. If I'm not going to win a Super Bowl, then I want max money. And if I'm not going to get a lot of money, well, then I better win a Super Bowl. I better get my numbers. I better get some Hall of Fame numbers so I can maybe get myself in the Hall of Fame and get money in the back end then or whatever. You know, it just, it just becomes, that's when things start to get really business oriented because you have to figure out where am I? What type of player am I? What's my potential? You know, like Higgins could be like, you know what, man, I don't really care if I win a Super Bowl. Of course I want to, and I want to try and support it, but I want to get paid and I want targets. Okay. I know I'm a great player. I don't want to be second fiddle to Jamar Chase. It's, I'm not trying to be selfish here, but like, I only got one shot in the NFL. I want a ball. I want to play. 
I want to be the leader on the team. I want to be the number one wide receiver. I want to be the guy that everyone looks to. I'm excited for that role in my life. I want to do that. It doesn't mean you're being selfish even. Of course, now in other instances, it definitely could be selfish. But since Joe Burrow keeps getting injured, and because the Bengals really only got close that one time to winning the Super Bowl, if T. Higgins is like, I want out of here, I don't think it's necessarily him maybe being a diva, you know? I think it's a, a little bit different, potentially, of a different situation. But it could also very much be a diva. He could very much just be like, I'm the man, I'm the god, I'm this, get me out of here. Or, I just want money. Or, I don't think the Bengals can win. Joe Burrow can't stay healthy. I don't want to keep wasting my career with backup quarterbacks. Get me out of here. Get me somewhere where I can go and actually compete. You know? I mean, people, I think a lot of people around the league, especially wide receivers, saw what happened with Antonio Brown and um, AJ Brown, I guess both Browns, you know, where they're like, get me out of here. And, you know, they got out, they got sent to two teams and both those teams went to a Super Bowl instantly. So that's the thing. Like you can, inst you can get instant success. Now, granted, both those running, uh, wide receivers have already got the bag and were already, you know, established, obviously bona fide uh, wide receivers that T Higgins is of course to a degree but not on aj brown or antonio brown's level um at least not yet you know maybe one day um so i think it's a lot trickier i think the situation is messy and even if they even if the Bengals re-signed both those players and this was all a negotiation tactic i still think it's a bad indicator of the culture and what's going on um within the Bengals. and i do think a part of that actually is joe burrow the whole Joe Cool smoking the cigars, you know. I, I think that is somewhat problematic. Not massively problematic, but ever so slightly. I think it kind of, you know, is the soil for some of these more problematic, you know, instances. You know, that Jamar Chase, he's always chirping and it's like, what have you done? You know, and, and I think it's, um, I, I think there's too much noise out of the Bengals considering... One, they haven't won, and two, they've had injury issues, especially, obviously, of course, with Joe Burrow. So can you ever really be confident going into the next season? Because you can't stay healthy. So but those are just my thoughts. I would absolutely love to hear yours. What do you think about the Bengals? Do you think the Bengals are actually indeed in trouble? Or do you think that they will be ready to go next season and can give the Chiefs a run for their money? Let me know in the comments below. And please don't forget to subscribe. And please also don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much and see you next time.